Hey, uh, woke people, stop trying to bring wokeism to fitness. It's not going to work. Oh, looking for a fight. Are they I still, love it. Yeah, like what's the latest thing now? Oh, I'm going to read to you guys okay. some fun stuff, and then I'm going to explain why this wokeism Well, we is had not an episode happening. where we kind of covered some ideas that have infiltrated the, the fitness realm. Yeah, so, that, so, so you know, you guys know I got kicked off Instagram, so now I'm on Twitter. Apparently, Twitter is also... Hell, just like Instagram was, just, just a little <laughs> you, different, just more words. You didn't know that? Oh, yeah, okay. it's just more okay. words. But anyway, there's somebody on there. Um, her Instagram handle is at fattymph. And uh, you can't follow her unless she approves it, by the way, so I'm see if she'll let me follow her. But anyway, this is a post that she did. Okay. Look her up, and it says, it says this. Fatty MP, that's what it is? Fatty MPH. Oh. MPH. So it says here- uh, Miles per hour? I have no idea. <laughs> how, many fat, how many fatty per hour can is you that, do? Yeah. So, so listen to this, and this is, uh, this is a quite infuriating, uh, but you know, I, I, I get irritated by it, but to be quite honest, it's not going to work. Oh, you must space. be blocked by her then. Why? Because I can look at her. Really? Yeah, I can look at her page. No way. Yeah, that means, you're, that means you're blocked. I've already got warnings, dude. Uh, wow. That's crazy. She's on to you. That happened quickly, huh? Yeah. That's impressive. All right, so check out what this post says. It says- Periodic reminder that treating and preventing obesity actually means trying to conversion therapy fat people into becoming thin people despite zero evidence this is even remotely possible. <laughs> I know, so, so stupid. So, so if you're obese, you should just give up? Well, you know, what, thought? You know what makes me upset about Don't this? Don't try. It, well, well here's, here's why I like to say it's not going to work, right? The fitness industry is different than other industries in that most people or many of the people that work in this space – who genuinely work in the space, genuinely want to help people through fitness, through exercise, through proper nutrition, through developing a better relationship with food and their bodies and exercise. We, at one point, were all, you know, quote unquote, out of shape or overweight or unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And fitness is what got us uh, to kind of where we're at in terms of our health um, and our, our physiques and whatever. And it's also what makes us such uh, strong proponents of it. So in other words, the fitness industry is made up of empowered people, self-empowered people who have thrown away the victim mentality, yeah. right? Because the only way you can succeed, if you do have a big weight loss goal, for example, the only way you can succeed long-term is to take the victim mentality and dispose of it. Because at some point you have to accept what you can't change and you have to focus on what you can change. Yeah. That's the only way to progress and if you do this long enough, you figure that out. And so somebody coming in and saying something like that to people like us, yeah. it just, it doesn't, it's not going to work. Yeah, it doesn't resonate at all. I no. mean, it's, it's about personal growth. And, and really that's the whole fitness journey is, you know, discovering who you are through, um, you know, these encounters, these, these um, uh, you know, this environment where you're able to work on hard um, hard things in, in order to get stronger, get better and get a better understanding of, you know, what's going to benefit your body versus, you know, just sort of taking on the world. Yep, do, you totally. th do you think these messages start from a good place and then they kind of morph into this like just extreme example of it? Like, I really, I want to believe that what the, this pushback that you're getting right of the fat phobia deal is, because the fitness space has failed obese people for so long, because um, I, I know the angle, the statistics, like right that she's trying to to point towards, is that that you know only you know twenty percent of the people have any success. Of that twenty percent, fifteen percent of that them end up putting all that weight back on after two or three years. Mm -hmm. So you know all these methods of yeah. how we lose weight or try and fix obesity has continually failed for years so which has been a big criticism that we've shared you right know, we totally. brought that up totally. but I, so but do, do you so do you believe that this messaging is is coming from initially a good place and then it's kind of morphed into this no, extreme version of it not no. at all you i think, think it's like a it's I, a gas gaslighting right, right, right because it exists in other spaces it's it's the same philosophy applied to anything where the 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 message is hey it's not your fault in fact, it's everyone else's fault. Uh, you're a victim. Don't do anything about it, and it's all good. And that that you see that permeating a lot of spaces. It's the same message, just applied now to the fitness space. Where I think it comes from a good place are people within our space that are say saying this message, but in a better way. People in our space are saying things like, hey, look, 
you know, restricting diets don't necessarily work or you have to love your body in order to have long-term success. And love doesn't mean, uh, you know, where you just, uh, this is my body, I'm gonna do whatever I want, but rather I'm gonna take care of myself, like from the truest sense, yeah. right? It's about healthy application of exercise, that over-exercise or over-restriction or over-dieting. That message is coming from within the fitness space. And although it's a minority, it's still getting, it's getting louder. We're one of those, uh, yeah. those people in that space that says that. So, but this is not coming from a good place. This is coming from a, this is a, an ideology that is trying its hardest. And you know, I under, I know why they're trying to come after the fitness space. I'll tell you right now, P because fitness is empowering. It yeah. is, it is counter. Cause you think for yourself. It is counter this bullshit. It yeah. is hundred percent counter. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you see any movement based, based off of victimhood and, you know, follow along and listen to everyone else and you're not in charge of yourself or whatever. If you ever listen, you'll always find the fitness space will be the most resistant. Oh, always. I feel like that's not why. I feel like we're, they're coming after us because we're we're the easiest target. We're a bunch of narcissistic, vain, you know, fucking turds. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, so we're like an easy layup for I someone think, like that. You know that. what's it's funny? Like, I think that, uh, and a lot of- Because of a lot of bad experiences out and, there and the, that people I, share. Let's be, and, let's be honest here, okay? Uh, just go back five, 10 years, not even that long ago- um, the people that we we idolize in the fitness space or that were head, uh, held up as the authority just are not good examples. Yes, but most of them are broken inside. They've got all kinds of issues and addictions and but that's obsessions. Skewed, but and, that's what's skewed. So think about it this way. Think of all the people you know in the fitness space personally. Vast majority of them are not like that. Mm -hmm. We're talking. What you're talking about are the. Uh, the insta celebrity. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. I you think, think most of the people you know in fitness are. Well, narcissistic I mean, I know. I like to think the people that I surround myself with are good people, and I've weeded out a lot of those people in my life. But I think a vast majority of the fitness space is broken, and I and I think it's a spectrum. What I, the example I'm giving right now is an extreme. The ones that have been highlighted and put up on a pedestal and have a lot of fame and attention because of whatever vain reason. But I I do think that. A, a vast majority of the fitness space is still very broken. I think that there's a lot of things to be fixed. That's why we started uh, the of podcast. Course. But if you consider the whole fitness space, which includes people that work in gyms, trainers, coaches, people that help people with nutrition, people who work out consistently, who take care of themselves consistently, then you'll see that a majority of the people I, I would are, say, are great. Okay, so, it, what it is is it's the so small you, percentage that are fitness if you media. Bring in, if, you, if you bring in the, the health and wellness portion of our space and you include that in the conversation they help balance that out right the the and i and i you know i've teased that space before the you know hippie crunchy side but i think that they have a much better approach they've been preaching the message of love yourself and and take care of yourself yeah. like they've been preaching that for a long before we were and i think they help balance our our space out i think for a very long time the you know six pack abs muscles you know, you know fake body parts but they're the injections, ones that get the attention they're not the majority I, I get what you're saying they're the ones getting the attention okay so okay fine they're you can make the case they're a minority but they're moving the majority they're, they're the speaking to the majority yes so it's the media yes so you can agreed. make you could you could you know I'll concede that maybe there is uh you know fewer not much fewer though in the entire space but they are the loudest voice or the most powerful voice and they have been for several decades that now. i agree, that i agree with i think the the popular fitness media is garbage but when you meet people who work in fitness when i meet with trainers when i meet with coaches when i meet with gym owners the intentions are typically very good people are very growth minded they're very accepting of people who want to help themselves, who come into their gyms, who are obese, who need whatever. We talked about this, right? The yeah. gym is a very accepting mm -hmm. place, which is counter to what someone like this would say, which is the gym is the most judgmental place in the world, which is not true. So yeah, I, I agree with that, that there are the, the, the influencers, the fitness media people, that's for sure garbage. I think that's true for a lot of spaces though. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a, it's a great space and very empowered. People take their health into their own hands. And most people who work in fitness, I mean, everyday people who work in fitness, uh, dealt with this themselves at some point. They overcame these struggles themselves. So trying to hit them with this message, good luck. It's not gonna work. You, you tell this to a trainer or someone who lost 50 pounds 10 years ago, who now figured out how to keep it off and take care of themselves, 
you tell them this message, they're gonna laugh at you in your face. You're like, well, what, what is about? the message promote? Like, I just uh, like, do they even think? It's about- not trying to promote anything. It's literally trying to take down. It's exactly. trying to tear down. Exactly. And, this and is revenge culture. That's how I thought. So yeah, I we're, think we're it- in the revenge of everything. Like, like it doesn't matter. There's no forgiveness. Everybody wants to take everybody out if they have a difference of opinion. And it's it's all about revenge and getting self gratification. That, that's what I picture is has happened is like I think that the, like this this example you this girl you're giving right? I, I briefly went through her page and kind of seen the, the stuff and by the way she's supposedly an educator. Oh, um, that's scary! Us. Right, <laughs> that is scary. And and so what I think is, so she's probably she's educated probably and fairly intelligent and I think that she she arms herself with that and she's probably been hurt by somebody in our space who is superficial and vain and probably turned her off or hurt her in a way, whether it be emotionally or physically or metabolically or done something. And she is on a war path to tear down anyone and everyone that fits in that category. And unfortunately for us, a a big portion of our space can be, can be cattled into that category. It could be, or it could be that nobody in our space hurt her. It's a hug, I guess. It could be nobody in our space hurt her, something else hurt her. She's got body image issues. And That's fair. This is the easy target. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that guy, we all know that guy, who had a terrible girlfriend, cheated on him, did something terrible, and after that, he's like, I hate women. And all he does now is he looks at him as objects, and yeah. he just, I'm not going to ever- man, like, yeah, like yeah. women hating groups. Yes, or he had a terrible relationship with his mom, and this is how he develops. And you see sometimes with women, too. That's what it reminds me of. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious. It's angry. It's vitriolic. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody. That's the biggest point. Because that- if, you're list- if you're reading that, and you're in this position, I, I try to put myself in that person in a person's shoes who- Maybe she's reaching, right? Like, so I'm mm-hmm. overweight. Mm-hmm. I've struggled with this my whole life. Oh boy, it's been hard. I've gained it and lost it. You know, I got teased for it maybe in school, feel very insecure. It's a tough position to be in. This is, by the way, why we all started working out here. Our the, the hosts of this podcast dealt with this ourselves. But I imagine this person who's just can't figure it out, is angry, is frustrated, reads this, is like, yes, never going to work out again. Yeah. Yes, eat whatever I want. This is what I need to do. And you know what, who, you know whose fault it is? It's the fitness industry's fault. It's trainers' <laughs> faults. It's gyms' faults. They're fat shaming me. Yeah. This is, you know, this is, I'm a victim of their oppression. What a terrible, terrible, stupid message. But also good luck. Good luck trying to permeate the fitness industry. This is one of the most, and I mean the, the genuine fitness industry, the people actually work with people, not the media, you know, people, the celebrities, but rather the trainers and coaches that work with people. Good luck trying to sell that message to them. It's not going to work. There's, there's some of the most empowered people, at least in this regard, that you'll ever find. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're also, and I think I'm a bit jaded because I know we are in the middle of one. We're in this, you know, social media space. It's relatively new. Um, the a lot of these, the, probably the wrong people got a lot of the fame and attention uh, early on. Yep. I like to think that we're part of the movement, to the, some of the cream that will rise to the top. And I think we're seeing that. I think more and more of the better voices, the better information, yeah. uh, you know. And that's when I see something like this. Like I, I'm not the type of person that would want to cancel her or you know at, at all shut her down. It's like, dude, better better, better ideas win. That's yeah, all. that's right. Better yeah. ideas, better conversations will will silence somebody yeah. like this because eventually those people that you know are are banding together or agreeing with her still have a ton of work they got to do on themselves. And then mm-hmm. eventually if they do want to grow, improve uh-huh. and change their life for the better, they will ve- eventually have to seek out the truth and the shit that she's spewing is not the truth. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, there was another article I read it's like lifting weights. Why lifting weights is toxic masculinity. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.